There we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first track, uh, the first slot in uh, track two uh, in a very, very technical thing. And I'm very uh, happy to welcome Matthias Michaud here on stage. Uh, hi, Matthias. How are you today? Hello. Fine, fine. I'm uh, uh, happy to be able to talk here. So. Uh, okay. Um, Matthias is, oh, and I'm. I'm Eki, by the way. <laughs> Hi. Um, so Mat Matthias is uh, based in the Netherlands, I guess. In Belgium. Uh, Belgium. Belgium. Oh, my God. Yeah. Of course, yeah, with, with Drop Solid. Yeah. And um, one of the people behind the Mordic, or the, the, the big strategic product, product in Drop Solid that also involves Mordic, and also a heavy contributor lately in the Mordic world, specifically in the security team. So thank you very, very much for that already. Um, again, this is going to be a rather technical talk. It's going to be about composerization of MORTIC, about installing that piece of software in a proper and controlled fashion. And I'm myself really curious about all the backgrounds that you can give us. For everybody attending, um, there's a Q&A tab please answer all your questions in the Q&A that's in the middle. Not, do not use the global chat, but please use the questions and answers for this specific talk. If there's anything urgent, you can also raise your hand and I'll try to keep an eye on that. Other than that, I hand it over to Matthias and uh, we'll talk to you later for the questions. Thanks. All right, thank you. So hello, I'm Matthias. Today I want to tell something about uh, Motic and Composer and the way uh, forward. Um, First, let me, one second, yes, introduce myself. So I'm Matthias Michaud or Molux on GitHub or other channels. Uh, I've been most of my professional career a Drupal developer and a, a DevOps person. Um, and currently I'm the product architect at RobSolid, uh, having, uh, yeah, hel helping out with the architecture of the DropSolid uh, experience cloud and the whole ecosystem we built it. Um, like uh, Eki mentioned, I'm an, uh, I've joined the Motic community for about a year now. Um, and I'm also a member of the security team. And in a personal uh, life and also in professional life, I have an urge to automate a lot of, thing, a lot of things, uh, which is both a blessing and a burden. So, uh, But well, that's enough uh, about me. So what do I want to talk about today? Uh, I briefly want to introduce uh, who Drop Solid is as a company. And I quickly want to go over what Composer actually is for people not really being familiar with that, then how Composer is used in Motic and how uh, Motic and that comp uh, uh, Composer version is used at RobSolid and what challenges and uh, that gave and uh, of gives still gives and how the future looks about the Composer way of uh, using Composer in, in Motic. And if, any, if there are any questions, uh, you can ask, ask them the way that I mentioned or afterwards uh, at the end of the session. So who is or what? Who is Drop Solid? Uh, Drop Solid is a company based in Belgium. It exists for around nine years, and we actually focus on dig digital experiences and uh, digital experience in an open way for our uh, customers. So, actually, what we have, we have an open digital experience platform uh, where we combine content management, marketing automation, and uh, uh, customer data and personalization parts, uh, and all based on open source tooling. So. Or tools. So for the, the the content management part, we use Drupal. For the marketing automation part, we use Motic. And for the customer data or personalization part, we uh, use Unomi. And on top of that, is some AI powered drop solid magic to um, make the personalization even better. So that's what we do. And so what are the key key points of those uh, parts? Uh, for the Drupal part, is that uh, we allow you to manage your content in one place and publish it everywhere. So a multi-channel of a non-channel approach. Um, and all other stuff like headless approaches and stuff like that. And for the marketing automation part, well, it's yeah, the uh, building up a long-term relationship with our uh, uh, visitors uh, via, via Motec. And then for the personalization part is really building uh, a real-time overview of in each individual visitor of the, the websites of our, our clients. So that's in a really short, short nutshell what the... Uh, open digital experience platform that we, build, that we build or maintain. And that's where I'm the architect, uh, architect of. And that's why I'm involved in the Motic community to be able to uh, ensure that we can build on the robust base uh, for market automation, which is uh, Motic. So oh, that's really, really brief. Uh, let's now talk a little bit about uh, Composer. 
So what is Composer? Uh, Composer is a dependency manager for PHP projects. So it's a little piece of software that actually helps you uh, define the dependency of the project. It's written in PHP itself. And for those who are familiar with uh, like front-end frameworks or other tooling, it's it, it uh, helps you out with the same, uh, of, it does the same purpose as like NPM or Yarn or a Bundler uh, and stuff like that. And the main two uh, most important files there are the Composer JSON and Composer log file. Those are actually definitions of something. And the Composer JSON file defines what you actually want to install. So like I want to install Motic and uh, in, uh, I want to install Motic, and then the Composer log file defines, OK, you want to install Motic, and this is the version of Motic, and those are all the dependencies you need. So basically, the Composer log file contains also like a big dependency graph. If you need this, then you also need this piece of this piece of software or this piece of library. But that library requires another library, and so on and so on. So it's a whole chain uh, that's, uh, that's defined in that Composer log file. And the whole Composer or any other dependency manager uh, consists of constraints and requirements. So for this package, you need another package. Or also, you need a specific version of a pa package. Uh, it has to be higher than version 2, otherwise I won't work, stuff like that. Or I require PHP 8 uh, to work. So those are all managed in that Composer JSON, Composer log file of your project and the dependencies of your project. So Composer has been around for, for around uh, 10 years. And um, rather recently, Composer 2 came out, the uh, a ma a major update. And it has been a massive improvement in speed and memory footprint. So. If you had used Composer before, and, and love, for example, in three or four years ago, you thought, wow, that's slow. Well, it's, 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 it improved a lot. And also, the memory footprint is really, really uh, improved a lot. So that's Composer. It's a dependency manager. But a dependency manager of what? Of packages. And those packages has to have to be defined somewhere. So that's actually a dependency repository. So uh, what's that? That's a place where all the PHP libraries are defined. And the de facto standard for, for being used with Composer is uh, packages. That's the one that's public, and uh, you, you can use it uh, very easily together with, uh, with GitHub integration and stuff like that, or with any integration. And so all the packages that are currently available for Motic, so the, which I will talk about later, are actually already on packages. I added uh, links to the slides. You can see it like that. But a dependency repository doesn't only have to be packages-based. You can also have another. A custom repository like GitLab has it in his offering to uh, to build your own uh, uh, repository, which can be useful to have your own private uh, repository for packages you don't can, you can't share or uh, or won't share with the rest of the world. Or the repository can even be a local folder. So Git um, uh, composers not uh, allows you to to define the place where your uh, actual libraries live in a very broad way. I'm not going to go further than this into detail into Composer, but if you go to the website of Composer, you will find a lot of more explanation on how to uh, to do this. So that's in a uh, nutshell, uh, Composer. So, and then Composer and Motic. Uh, Composer has been in Motic forever. Like the, I went back in the whole uh, and the log file of, of uh, the, the hit history, sorry, of the, the, the Motic project. And really, in the first, first, first commit is actually creating the projects with based on a Symfony uh, template. And there is a composer file. So it has been there forever. Every dependency during development that has been added or every library that was needed to create plugins or work on the Motic core system has been defined uh, via uh, composer. Um, but uh, for uh, for every major, uh, for every version before uh, version four, uh, the only way of installing Motic was via uh, generated tarball, which means there was the there was a release plan, and there was a version tagged, and then a script ran, and every part of the or all the dependencies was packaged together, and there came out a tarball with all the code in it, so the Motic code plus all dependencies in it. And it's a tarball, so basically a zip file or a tar file that contains everything, and then that you could upload to your server, deploy it, and uh, that works. And then for updating, you could uh, you also had the option to only download the difference, uh, the, the tarball with only the difference. Uh, and yeah, that works. Problem is, that's not really ideal to, uh, to allow you to create a product on top of it, because yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't work well in an automated way. And this approach is also called, it was at that point, uh, Motic was a monorepo. Everything everything, both, uh, both the core, all the plugins, all the teams, 
were in one repo and stay there. That was a that was a, both the source and the outcome of the project. And then at some point, a person <laughs> created a ticket or an issue at uh, or a, sorry a pull request on GitHub to start the composerization project uh, of Motic. That person was. Uh, uh, well, is Nick Vinov. He, he's a, the former CTO at RobSolid. So he started that initiative just because of that. Because at that point at RobSolid, we really feel the need to, if you want to make a product out of it, we are, will be stuck if we don't start help out in our process. So at that point, uh, uh, you can look up the pull request there that started in March 21. Uh, at that point on, from that point on, uh, the process starts to split up Motic Core and its plugins into separate repo uh, repositories. So. That's actually a process where you then, uh, for example, in Motic, you have the lib folder, which is actually Motic core. That code is, and every change that happens is being uh, pushed to that uh, sub repo, uh, sorry, to that separate repo. Same for every plugin is pushed to a separate repo. Every team is pushed to a separate uh, team, uh, team repo. So those are uh, to a separate repo. And then uh, there is some uh, definition done uh, in, the, in the repo or in packages to uh, that they ping each other. So if there's a change, then packages is aware of it, it's, uh, it's enabled to release. So then you can via Composer pull uh, in that, uh, that change. Um, but that point is not enough because then you have just a bunch of uh, loose repos there. You have the Motic core lib, a Motic uh, team uh, blank and all the other uh, teams and plugins. So for that, there is also something else needed and that's uh, a starting point. And that's a recommended project. So. That's also that's in that whole initiative to compo compose rise Motic was the process of uh, splitting up the the outcome of the repo into separate uh, uh, repos per uh, per uh, feature, so a team or a plugin, and create a project, a separate project that can be used as starting point for Composer. Um, and that's a Motic recommended project. Um, also, the whole Composer initiative was also a requirement to be able to start a marketplace because at that point you want to pull in actually a plugin from the marketplace to be added to your project. So that requires Composer. So it's not only to be able to um, to more productize Motic, but also to be able to actually fulfill a need from other people too, to be able to install uh, very easily extra uh, plugins. Um, at that point, uh, the monorepo only approach shifted a bit to a monorepo as multi-repo approach, which means that even though you start your development as a monorepo, uh, the outcome can be split up in multiple parts. Um, so that's uh, what, what, what was able from then on from March 21, which and the first release having it was Motic 4. I will come back to the smoothness of that process. But it, was, it didn't went that smooth as, as uh, expected and it's still not uh, finished, but yeah, that's uh, was going on since March 21. Um, I mentioned a lot of specific stuff. I won't have enough time to go into detail here, but uh, basically, I have uh, I have some links about how to what's the definition of uh, what's the difference between a monorepo and a multi-repo. I also uh, uh, some links about how Symfony does it because Symfony has the same approach. Symfony code base is one big code base, and then every specific Symfony component is split up into a separate repo, and also how the packages integration works with GitHub, just for people more interested in the background of it. All right. So at some point, um, some point, Motic was was a, a, the, the source code of Motic enabled to be installed in this in a in a composer based way. So that's why what we needed actually at Drop Solid because for us Motic is a managed product. It's the client doesn't have to install itself. It's uh, it, the client uh, they only have access to the end result, so the the user interface, and they they we we take care of the updates the 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 configuration, the scaling, and stuff like that. Um, so what we did, we built a custom install profile based on the Motic recommended projects, where, ha where we have some uh, some of our own constraints. So for example, we limit the number of teams that are by default enabled, or we have some extra or less plugins than the default. We also take care of the, the config files, and I will come back to that in a, a bit later. So we, we don't have an issue with uh, the local PHP file or the security local or the, the parameters local files. We don't have that uh, specific issues. And we also have some extra patches in there for uh, for almost all of them. All the extra patches are actually a, a, a pull request 
in een work in progress phase or a, a, a completed phase uh, at Git, uh, on the GitHub. So we actually try to uh, to contribute everything we are doing uh, for custom for our uh, managed modic. Um, and also some logic to deal with custom plugins and teams because we are somewhere somewhere in between. <laughs> we have a managed pro uh, managed modic product, but yeah, you want some custom teaming. So how do we handle that then? So there we have some kind of solution for. And we're still uh, uh, figuring out or handle or tackling the scaling issues. So for large scale modics where we are uh, figuring out how to do the queuing part, both for sending out mails as for receiving all the information back for mails, uh, also handling all the cron jobs for massive campaigns and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, that's Motic in the, in the, in the context of uh, DropSolid. So yeah, as already mentioned, there are some uh, challenges encountered during that journey and what's the future then? How, how can Motic continue to work with uh, Compote? So while pre, uh, while um, preparing this presentation, I was thinking what, what was actually challenging during the whole process. And one of the things that I didn't saw immediately when we worked on this is actually the, well, sorry, one step back. So what do I talk about? The documentation part. So well, what's, what's going on there? How the product structure of Motic is not really ideal uh, to work in a composerized way. Also how the how, whole, the whole automation and testing part and how to handle dependency locking. So the first one is about documentation. Um, it's 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 challenging to to understand where the the, the issues lay uh, lay when you uh, try to figure out why why it doesn't work for a specific use case. And while pre uh, preparing this presentation, I've, I went through documentation both on the documentation pages of, of Motic and also, for, for example, in the repos, like for it, the, the documentation in the recommended project has some steps to do. Well, there are some uh, inconsistencies there and also the code documentation not complete. We are really aware of that. Uh, and that's something that really needs some more work and also to understand that we describe the use cases correctly for people wanting to start with Motic or to upgrade their existing Motic installation from a tarball-based to a composer-based installation. Um, one other thing that I encountered uh, is that there is an assumption that people who maintain a Motic installation actually also use Git, which isn't the case for uh, we, we learned uh, looking at the issues. And that leads to some issues because some people suddenly uh, lose uh, lose a custom plugin or a custom team because they are not aware that the moment they do the install is gone. And previously they they, um, they just rolled out the change over their existing installation and the, the things that are extra are weren't gone. So that's a thing we need to address too. And also another thing is change is hard, as in it's difficult to to. Uh, and it takes a lot of time to sometimes to convince people that it's actually the correct approach to have a viable solution in the, the long run for uh, maintaining and for maintaining a project, not only for the, the community, but also for yourself as an as and the company where you are setting up the, the, the Motic installation for. Another thing I, I noticed is that uh, there is a, 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 a misconception that it's actually a good idea to clone the GitHub repo to start your Motic from. That's actually not a good idea. And, so what I want to say here uh, is that we really need to focus also on the documentation part and to make the general knowledge on how to do it, at least for the people who have to maintain Motic on a technical level, that they understand that at least there is a guideline for non-technical people or how to do it in a correct way uh, without missing steps or without taking assumptions and, and how they should proceed. Um, as I already mentioned, the, the product structure of Motic isn't ideal to work in a split up way, so to say. So one of the, 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 the issues there is that specific files, like the config files of Motic, where your database credentials are stored or your, uh, well, actually the whole configuration of your Motic installation is stored, are actually living inside the application folder in the app folder, which means that every time you update Motic, the application folder is uh, thrown away and replaced with a new version. Well, that folder, the app application config folder is, is gone too. So all your local settings are, are gone too. That's not ideal. And the same happens for like uh, assets uh, or media uh, media items in, in Motic. So the, they are using the same folder for uploading, uh, 
images like in the in the front end or sorry images that, that are used in that are uploaded via the front end are stored in the same folder as the original assets provided by uh, Motic core installation and that's not ideal because then you have again an, an issue when updating and that's one of the uh, pull requests you have open currently to it's still a work in progress and uh, to help out there because it, it would have a huge impact in maintaining a Motic and knowing that okay everything that the user uploaded in this folder and it's fine. I don't. I never have to touch it. I don't have to care about that part. It's just user uploaded content that has nothing to do with the application itself. Also, if you look a step further and look into how to run it in a, in a containerized uh, environment, and you want to separate some folders to store in, this, in a different way, you also need this. You need to split user uploaded content uh, from your application uh, content, and that's yeah, that's challenging. Uh, we are running this pull request in production for all our motics, and it works without issues. So we we don't we we can actually constantly update motic and all the like. Uh, for example, the one example there is the the standard dashboards. Um, they are split up. There's a standard dashboard are there, and custom customers that create their own dashboard they are separated. I mean, don't never have to. Uh, we never have to be afraid that the the customer loses his dashboard the moment you update Motic. Another thing is the custom teams and plugins. Um, as I said in the beginning of the presentation, I'm a Drupal developer, so I have a lot of experience in Drupal. Uh, and there, there is that concept existed already from the beginning. You can choose which folders you install your custom modules, teams, uh, profiles in, and those that you use from Drupal.org. So, or those basically those that, that are a contrib, uh, or a contributed project that somebody uh, uh, somebody maintains that's not written by yourself. But Motic doesn't really have it. It's all in the same folder. So that's basically the project structure. Structure is somehow uh, working against the the whole idea of uh, being able to split up the the, the separate folders and, and logic in, in Motic itself. Um, okay, then. Uh, as mentioned in April, uh, sorry, in March 21, the process started to split up to have, sorry, to have a split up version of the the mono repo, and that was using the concept of a subtree split, which means I take this folder and I put it in that repo. That's all done via GitHub magic, uh, the GitHub Actions magic. Well, it didn't work out at all the time correctly, which happened, but led to the fact that at some point Motic was released, the tarball release was there. But the same changes were not pushed anymore to the repos. So currently it's working good and it's working fine. And I think even flawlessly the last releases, so that's really good. But it's, it was a, a hurdle we had in the past uh, to get over, but it works now. Another thing is in the automation part is uh, um, uh, it's only recently that uh, we added the test to check if the outcome of a change would actually result in a correct state in, when installing it via Composer. For people who are here that actually remember the issue with the autoloader in in Motic 4.2, uh, I think that the actually uh, yeah in 4.2, well that's actually something we had no test for. It was just not tested to ensure that actually the end result would work. So those tests are there now. We we check if we can actually install via Composer before we actually publish the packages if it will work. But yeah, that's something you need. Otherwise, you can be uh, can be confident it will work in the long run. Okay, and then uh, last thing I specifically want to mention here is uh, dependency locking. So currently, the recommended project only lists uh, what what the minimum dependencies are that you need. For example, the Motic recommended project basically says, okay, I want CoreLib uh, higher than version four, and I want these plugins higher than version four. It will check, okay, the last version that currently is 4.3.2, and it will pull it in. It will check, okay, those dependencies, what are their dependencies, and it will pull all those versions in that, that correspond with their requirements. The problem is that it's most likely not the same version as would be uh, be uh, generated in the tarball, because the same thing happens when the tarball is generated. It calculates the whole dependency tree. Okay, this is the package I need. I will pull it in, and, and so on and so on. But that information is not stored nor added somewhere in a repo that it could uh, help out the project that starts from Motic recommended project. That's a concept, that's a rather technical concept, but it's a concept that exists in the Drupal world. The world they, a project should never actually uh, recommend, uh, uh, require a Drupal core itself directly, but more the Drupal core recommended project, which means 
This is Drupal core library and all these dependencies I want in this version to ensure that the end result, if you download the, the, the tarball of Drupal or you do it via Composer, has exactly the same dependencies. Because then you are the, the only way you can guarantee that uh, all the tests that have run on the Motic um, repo actually and the, the dependencies it had there are actually exactly the same as I would download during uh, uh, when, when using Motic via uh, Composer based install. So that's a concept, a concept that's not there yet. Uh, Nick, when he started the Composer, compo Composerization uh, trajectory, already created the repos, but the logic is not there yet. That's something that needs to be tackled to have more guarantees on the outcome of the the of, of the install of the ways of installing uh, Motic. So yeah, and that is one of the main questions. Then is how. What's the future then for the whole Motic part, as it's for the whole Composer part, as it's a hard requirement for the marketplace. But as I mentioned before, there are some main, uh, uh, a lot of things that need, still need to be tackled or are still ongoing process to uh, have a smooth, uh, smooth ride there. So um, initially, the plan was to only allow Composer, uh, have Composer only installs and updates in Motic 5. Uh, but I, I uh, I not yet discussed it with with, uh, with Ruth or with others, but it's it may be tricky. It may be tricky if you want to guarantee that there, it's a smooth ride. And I think it's more we need more effort first before we will, would be able to guarantee that. So if it's if that's done before Motec Five, hooray hooray! Then it's ideal. We can uh, we can ship it. But I yeah, we will have to see when it's. When it's ready, because it makes no sense, in my opinion, and that's my opinion, for, to be clear. And this whole presentation is more or less my opinion, not per se the uh, for for the rest of the 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 people I actually actively work on, on the the composer part. So yeah, we will need to figure out what's the best approach there. So yeah, I don't know if this presentation made any sense or helped out in clarifying some parts. Uh, so if you have any questions, please ask them. And if you're not, uh, if you feel more comfortable com passing by our boot, uh, feel free to do. Uh, we are there the, the whole two days. Yeah, thank you so much. But yes, uh, awesome. I think that was a really, really uh, high speed ride from, from the very basics to the you know, to, to the hard nuts. Um, yeah, um, I see a little comment from Nick. <laughs> no, <laughs> no question so far. Uh, so please answer, or please give your questions in the Q&A part. So the first one comes from Ande. Will your presentation be accessible somewhere? Yes, uh, for sure. I have no issues oh. doing that. I will check with the, the, the conference itself if they, are, if they can be added to the... the video or something like that and i will i'm uh, have no issues sharing them also the links uh, that's why i added a lot of links to the slides too to have some back reference too for people uh, wanting to look into it afterwards too mm -hmm. okay good point yeah i appreciate that um we will have the videos online of course on youtube but there's uh, maybe, maybe we could add the link there plus maybe we can find an, an additional way to make this presentation and others available easily more easily Okay, Nick, can you talk? Can you talk a bit uh, about the marketplace that Dennis is leading, and how these two initiatives are linked, and where they stand today? Well, that would would have been my question too. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the marketplace is active, as in it's possible. Uh, I'm not. I'm. I can't speak for the marketplace itself because I'm not fully aware of where it's headed right now. I think it's still in the phase that. Uh, extra modules need to be added and approved to be uh, be part of the marketplace so you can enable them there but uh, they are really interlinked those two initiatives uh, as they require uh, the marketplace requires composer to be able to add extra uh, to add extra uh, plugins to or, or teams to your uh, functionality to your multi installation so yeah um, um, I'm not sure. so they are linked together, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and how I, I don't know, I'm not really sure I understand your question fully, Nick, but I think uh, they require each other. Uh, they, uh, the marketplace requires it. And I think 
uh, make it more robust requires us to fulfill the whole uh, the questions I uh, added, uh, the concerns I mentioned during the presentation. So we need to be able to have more stable composer in Motic, and it will help out the stability of the marketplace because people will otherwise uh, encounter the same issues that, uh, for example, a plugin is tested for a specific uh, Motic version in a contained way with these uh, requirements or these dependencies, sorry, and then somebody suddenly adds it to his own uh, installation and then something breaks. And then it's a very difficult situation because there is no real definition or what dependency it actually needs. So, yeah, the, the, the marketplace itself, it's still, it's, it's in Motic Core itself, so it's active. Um, but I'm not sure yet where it is or what the roadmap there. So that you will have to ask to Dennis, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 true. Okay, next up comes from Joey. If we go, comp if, we, if we do composer only, will Bitnami installs be deprecated? That's a good question. Um, I think they're not per se will be deprecated. It's more like they will change the they will change the same approach of installing Motic. Um, I think there is still a use case to to have an opinionated version or a, a, a managed version by uh, by Bitnami or their, their stack and their dependencies. Also the the more technical server dependencies that they manage or to they that are uh, configured there. So yeah, I think there will not be uh, deprecated because the Composer initiative is not to, uh, should not touch the easiness of some parts. It's more like a technical approach or maintaining a project. So yeah, I think that's something, but I think for example, one thing that will flow out the the Composer initiative that will help the, the stacks like Bitnami is the whole split up of the folders. And the fact that the custom user uploaded content should not be mixed with application content or application library will help out there also for those projects. It doesn't that doesn't have nothing to do with Composer itself, but it's some of the blockers that also Bitnami have to tackle because how do they update a stack if they if they don't know if that folder or that file should be touched or not? So yeah, they will actually be influenced by it and then only in a positive way, in my opinion. Okay. Do we have more questions? So can you talk again about um, the fully, full, fully composerized installation scenario? In my previous tech stacks that I used, that was always a little bit painful for, uh, let's say, the integrators, because it took away a lot of flexibility in terms of installing a plugin or changing some sort of a configuration, etc., because it was all controlled by Composer only. Um, I guess that's part of the, of the beauty, right? Yeah, and that's indeed that's that's the whole. How do we tackle custom stuff? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the same, like we, we have the same issue. We have the same issue. We 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 want to uh, we want to uh, provide our clients with a SaaS solution. So. It, they don't have to care about any technical stuff. They can use Motic and start using it. But then you have you are there with custom teams and custom configuration you need for that client. And there we find to we still need to find a sweet spot. So currently it's a mixture of uh, we we what we did what we did is we found a, our solution is currently to add the teams in a level uh, a level above the project. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, above the Docker where our teams are. And in Composer, like I referenced, let me go back to that slide. Whoop. So if I go back here, hold on the beginning of the presentation. Oh, sorry for the. Uh, like I said, the dependency repository can also be a local folder. So what we do is all our custom stuff, our teams or plugins, we add to a local repository, which is also in our composer repository, but is not part of our composer JSON. Hmm. Sorry, it's not part of a, of a public. Sorry, uh, uh, miss miss uh, miss uh, said that it's not part of a a team or a, a plugin that is publicly available because it's only for that client or only it doesn't make okay. sense to make it public. It's only for that yeah. client, but you still have to it's contained in the same way as the rest of our project. So that's how we do it, and I think that's something that also needs documentation. How to tackle those issues because that's also documentation that's lacking for people that are currently using one big folder with their whole Motic installation in it. They update. Motic core and the plugins, which is fine because their custom plugins stay in place. There is no nothing changed for those folders, and that's that's something we need to tackle in documentation too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big big deal. Documentation. I agree. Okay, last chance, everybody who has more questions about 
composer and the way Drop Solid is doing it, or the way Mordic should do it. Everybody's happy. In that okay. case, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, feel free to to join uh, to pass by the booths. I'm I will be here today and tomorrow, or schedule something with me, and I can I'm happy to talk about. Uh, Composer, other latest stuff. Like I'm also very interested in the PHP 8.1 upgrades part. I can talk about that too. We are uh, also doing great, uh, setting great steps there. So uh, yeah, feel free to ping me uh, here or uh, I'm on uh, the Motic uh, Slack. Excellent, good stuff. Uh, thank you, Matthias. Thank you so much for your time and for the insights. Um, I guess I talk to you later, today or tomorrow. And um, yeah. until then. Uh, Take care. Have a good time.